Hi, my name is Quinn, and I learned I was colorblind when I was only four years old. It's not that everything was black and white, but to me, rainbow was only blue and yellow. I never felt bad about it because my dad was colorblind too. And he was super rich and we lived in a huge mansion. It wouldn't be so bad to be just like him. The trouble began when I started going to school. I couldn't identify a single color right, and the teacher would go crazy trying to explain it to me. The other kids made it worse, especially my classmates Cindy and Lucas. They were twins, and they were both super annoying. They laughed at my outfits every single day. Dad and I couldn't spot a lot of patterns, so most of the time, I had no idea how I looked. You look like a clown. Did you get dressed in the dark? I'm colorblind. What is that? Sounds fake. Cindy told the whole class that I had made up weird, fake diseases, and everyone looked at me like I was crazy. Lucas was somehow even more annoying than Cindy. He wanted to test and see if I was telling the truth, so he would randomly put paint marks on my things to see if I would notice. Stop ruining my things, you jerk. I knew you lied. You can see the paint. I don't see some colors, some. One day, Cindy went too far. She took my book of drawings, tore out all the pages, and put them on the bulletin board. The whole class laughed at my pink trees and green skies. I attacked her and we started fighting on the ground while all the other kids cheered. Suddenly, Lucas showed up and pulled us apart. Stop it. Cindy, take the pictures down. You're taking her side? If she's really colorblind, we shouldn't make fun of her. I was in shock. Lucas was defending me? Cindy walked away fuming and I thanked him. He took the pictures down and apologized for not believing me. He spent days asking me endless questions to understand my condition. Is your whole family colorblind? Is it like losing memories? If I hit you on the head, will you see color again? He was crazy, but so funny. I thought we could actually become friends, but something happened that destroyed everything. All the kids had to give interviews to get into a fancy private middle school. This was the only good school in the entire town, and the competition was crazy. I didn't do well on my tests, and when the teachers decided I couldn't get a spot, Cindy laughed out loud. Ha! I knew you were stupid! Before a single tear could leave my eyes, my dad jumped into action. He offered the school a huge donation for taking me. We don't have space for another child. Then give her someone else's spot. I'll double the donation. Dad, that's cheating. The teacher pushed me aside and accepted the money. Then she went to Cindy and told her they were giving her spot to me. You have the lowest marks after Quinn, so it has to be you. The stupid teacher was so happy about the donation that she let it slip. And Cindy and her parents went crazy with rage. This is bribery. This is unfair. All the adults started fighting, and Lucas gave me the worst look ever. I can't believe you would do this. I knew he was cheating, but Dad refused to back down. We joined our new school, and Lucas came here all alone. One day, he told us that Cindy had been sent to boarding school. None of the other schools in town are good. Now she has to live away from her family. I hope you're happy, Quinn. That was the day we became enemies. He hated me. I felt bad for him, and I tried to make it up to him by buying him presents, but he threw them back in my face. You can't buy me, you brat. He told everyone in class what happened, and they thought I was a rich, spoiled jerk. He called me stupid names in class, and he made fun of my outfit so much that I started asking my maids to choose them for me. As if school wasn't hard enough, as I was growing up, the subjects were getting harder, and our textbooks labeled everything in different colors. My teachers taught with colored chalk and sent us color-coded notes for every class. Every time I failed, Lucas was ready to attack me. Why don't you just buy yourself a better grade? I threw my paper in his face. Even if I was bad at getting grades, I could still dance, sing, and run. I started going to classes and training after school. And in a few months, I was a part of both the school track team and the cheerleading squad. I guess you can buy a place in any club. Shut up, Lucas. Make me. I did make him shut up when I won my first gold medal in track. I rubbed it in his face so hard. When my winning streak continued, my principal called me to her office to congratulate me and said, Quinn, you can get amazing offers from colleges if you keep performing like this. But 
you have to maintain an average grade of a C. That made me nervous, and her solution made me want to throw up. We're going to partner you up with the best kid in school, Lucas. Lucas walked in with the most evil look on his face. The teacher said that Lucas would be my partner in every class from now on, and he would tutor me every day after school. Oh no. I tried to protest, but my teacher thought it was a great idea, and Lucas agreed with her. What was he going to get out of this? The answer was simple. He wanted to torture me. He gave me a mountain of homework every day, and if I didn't do it, he threatened to report me to the teacher. Whenever we partnered up for projects, he made me do all the work for the learning experience. He was going out of his way to annoy me. And one day, I just vented to my dad about it at dinner. I was not prepared for what dad did next. He showed up at school and barged into class with the principal. They announced that Lucas was expelled for bullying me. What? We all rushed to the principal's office and I screamed at my dad. What are you doing? Getting rid of your bully. I didn't want you to solve my problem. I just wanted your support. I am supporting you. You can't just crush people's lives for me. It's not fair. It's what made everyone hate me in the first place. If you do this, I am never talking to you again. Dad looked shocked. We had never shouted at each other like this. Fine, he can stay. Never bully my daughter again. With that, Dad stormed out without even looking at me. I'd never fought with him before, and I couldn't help but cry. When Lucas offered me a tissue, I slapped his hand away. I don't want your help. Just go away. I'm not helping you. I'm just standing near you, and I happen to have a tissue. I snatched it out of his hands and turned to leave, but he pulled me back. Why didn't you just let him expel me? Don't I bug you? I'm not a jerk. I hated taking Cindy's place, and I wish I could undo it. I'd never do that to someone again. I may have been meaner to you than I needed to be. I'm sorry. You're what? I'm sorry, okay? I'm not saying it again. With that, he ran away, and I was stunned. This was the nicest conversation we'd had in years. When I went home that day, Dad and I sat down to talk about what happened. To my surprise, he apologized for going overboard. I made him promise to trust me and let me handle my life myself. How can I make it up to you? Is there anything that you want? That's when I got an idea. I asked Dad to pay the school to offer Cindy a place again. She's living away from her family because of us. We should fix it. Dad agreed, and the next day, he put in a request to have Cindy transferred back. She accepted the offer from our school, and when Lucas realized she was coming back, he went crazy. Did you do this? Yes, I'm so happy she got accepted. Thank you. He grabbed me in a hug so tight, I could barely breathe. He finally forgave me for everything that happened, and we became friends again. He tutored me for real this time. He found colorblind, friendly versions of our textbooks, and if he couldn't, he would make notes that I could clearly understand. I finally got a B average, and I got an offer from an amazing college. I literally flew into Lucas's arms. He lost his balance and we fell. Our faces were so close together that I blushed. Suddenly, someone pulled him away from me. It was Cindy. She was back, and I was nervous. I was sure that she still hated me for all those years she had to be away from her family. But she acted totally sweet and normal. I know you took my spot, but I bullied you when we were kids. We both did stupid things. I miss my family, but I had a nice life in school. I'm just happy to be back now, and I hope we can be friends. I was shocked, but Cindy and I actually started hanging out. When Lucas finally got into his dream college, we all celebrated together. One day, Cindy showed up at my house, and she was in tears. She told me that her family was out of money. There's no way they can pay for Lucas's college. But he literally dreams about college. He can't go, unless you do something about it. Your dad has connections, right? He can convince the college to give him a full scholarship. N no, 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 no. We can't interfere. We have to. Lucas already has a spot, so we're not hurting anyone. He works so hard, he deserves this. I was scared, but she was right. I asked my dad for help, and he said, I have a friend at the university I can talk to. I'll do it. A few days later, 
Lucas showed up at school fuming. Did your dad contact the scholarship committee behind my back? N no, no. Tell me the truth. Everyone fell silent. Yes, he did. They just sent me their rejection letter for using my connections to get a scholarship. They banned me from applying again. You ruined everything, Quinn. My jaw hit the floor as he stormed off. I'd messed up horribly. Lucas refused to come to school, and he didn't pick up any of my calls. Cindy even took me to their house, and he just hid in his room and played music at the highest volume so he couldn't hear me. I was utterly shattered by what I'd done. I told my dad about it, and he came up with a plan. He apologized to the committee and told them that Lucas had no idea about his involvement. My daughter has a crush on the kid at school, so she made me do it. Oh my god, dad! With his explanation and a sizable donation, the school agreed to lift the ban on Lucas. I literally flew over to his house to tell him about it. He wouldn't open the door, so Cindy let me in through the window in his room. Ah! The college wants you back! They lifted the ban! I got their email. Did your dad pay for this too? Maybe he did. So what? It feels like you do whatever you want and you just pay for your problems to go away. I didn't pay for my problems to go away. I did it for you. I thought you deserved that school. You're being an idiot, Lucas. I convinced Quinn to help. She didn't even want to do it. I could have gotten into so much trouble. I just acted rashly because I care about you. I wanted you to have what you want, and I almost ruined everything. I'm really sorry. When Lucas finally forgave me, I literally burst into tears. I did not like feeling guilty. They both hugged me, and I finally felt better. I promised to never mess with their lives again. Now that all three of us were friends, Cindy noticed my feelings for Lucas instantly. She was so excited for me to ask him out, but I would get all nervous and chicken out every time. One day, Lucas and I were sitting in the cafeteria when a boy walked up to me. Hey, Quinn. Cindy said you were looking for a date, so I thought I'd take you out to dinner. You in? Cindy gave me a wink, and Lucas just glared at him. She can't go out with you. She's going out with me. I am? Oh, I didn't ask you. I'll do it now. Quinn, you want to go out with me? Dude, I asked her first. She'll pick me. Hmm, I don't know. Ah, uh, come on. It's a real pickle. I'll need two or three days to think about it. Lucas leaned across the table and kissed me. I was breathless. Yes, my plan worked!